Okay, uh, I'm with Grant Allen, I'm the race operations manager. The, uh, the car you're looking at is a show car. The body is current and uh, will be current, you know, as going forward. But there is a new, as Alana mentioned, there is a new, uh, a new car, a new, uh, a new body, and the chassis remains the same. You know, from uh, you know, from bro below the roof line, you know, the car is the same. The chassis. Change. What, what changed, the biggest thing, yeah. is that the, uh, the what we call the greenhouse okay. is narrowed up about seven to eight inches on each side, so it's a lot narrower. That's okay. Uh, it gives the car a better, a better profile. One manufacturer, Chevrolet, took uh, the styling cues and built what they call the Corvette DP. And, it, and when you get to see the car, there'll be some slides, uh, I believe, later on at lunch. And when you see that car, you'll see elements of a Corvette that, that are unmistakable. Uh, it's unbelievable how they could take that, you know, uh, the look of a, a Corvette street car and make it look, you know, the look of a Daytona prototype. It's a pretty exciting car. Uh, one exists right now and has tested. We have a test next week here at Daytona. We expect uh, three more. Uh, there's two more coming from the manufacturer, uh, Coyote. And, uh, and and that will, those will be run by Action Express, and then the uh, the Wayne Taylor SunTrust. Uh, they also have one coming, and, and it's on a different a different chassis. Uh, so we'll have uh, you know four of the tests. There's a fifth one coming. So in, at the 24 hour, we expect five Corvette DPs. Uh, we also expect uh, another uh, manufacturer, Riley, is building a, a body that that will envelope the new. Uh, the new uh, configuration for the for the external uh, dimensions, and it'll have a, a, a narrow greenhouse and whatever. And you know we're calling that a, a generic body, and that you know the manufacturer a manufacturer hasn't stepped up to design and, and cue it like uh, Chevrolet did with the Corvette, uh, but it'll it'll have the same uh, same same dimensions, and uh, and be run by I know Ganassi is going to have one, and and a few other teams will have them. So Ganassi is going to run the BMW again next year, and. Uh, you know, we'll have, we could have up to 10, uh, I would think, of the new, uh, you know, the new generation uh, chassis. Uh, but like I said, the under part of the car, when I, when I talk about the chassis, it, it is really the same. The suspension for each manufacturer hasn't changed. Uh, you know, the safety components are all still there. And the wing, all the cars are on the, the specified wing. That's a single manufacturer, and we specify that wing. I'll just give you a, a few uh, dimensions and, and you know, highlights of, of the, the prototype that, uh, you know, as it's, as it's been around. You know, the car was introduced in 2003. We, I think we had about six or seven at the, at the Daytona 24-hour race, the Rolex 24. It's a mid-engine car. Uh, the chassis, the frame of the car is steel tube frame. Uh, and and that's, uh, that's a cost, uh, cost component and a safety component there. Um, you don't get into, you know, special, uh, you know, aerospace, you know, composite, Carbon fiber tubs and what have you that that uh, you know take one impact and they're done. You know we have a, we had a car running last year that was the first chassis built by Riley and it run you know every year like seven years or, or whatever and, and it was still running. So the cars you know are built to last and, and you know Grand Am, one of Grand Am's foundations is, is keeping the cost low. So if you don't have to replace the chassis every time somebody comes up with a new a new uh, speed secret, you know, you're going to save money. So, you know, we're, we've tweaked the rules over the over the years since 2003 to help improve the car. But uh, basically, underneath the car is still the same as it as it came off the production in uh, in 2003. The engine, you know, we uh, we have a formula, a recipe, so to speak, for the engines. We try to keep that at 500 horsepower, plus or minus uh, a little bit, and, and the torque around 430. And, you know, you know, how do we do that? Well, we take the engines from the manufacturers, we go to the NASCAR R&D Center in Concord, North Carolina, we put them on a dyno and we run them, and that's the way they have to have to come to the racetrack. You know, some engines, you know, they're all, they're, they're different, you know, BMW is different than a Chevy, different from a, you know, from the Ford. So, some engines don't get as many modifications, there may be limits on the camshaft, or there may, may be an air inlet restrictor. Uh, and, and to verify that periodically, and we, about six times this year, you know, after the race, you know, we take the winner and two or three random cars, take your engine out, and we would take that engine as it came off the racetrack, go to 
or the Concorde and, and run them to see that the teams hadn't messed with them, the, the engine builders hadn't, you know, found that next tweak. And, uh, you know, fortunately for us and for them that, you know, everybody's found to be in, in compliance. Some of the eligible engines we have are Chev Chevrolet, BMW, you know, Porsche, both the flat six and the V8. Ford has an engine, Lexus, uh, they're currently not running with us, but, but they, they had an engine that was quite successful and then the Ferrari has been approved. Uh, but uh, again, nobody is running that. You know, it's a five or six speed sequential gearbox, uh, you know, sequential like a motorcycle. You just push forward to shift up, pull back to go down. And then uh, uh, some of the, uh, in, in, in our gentleman driver category, which is for uh, drivers that don't make their living solely as a professional race driver. They, they could be businessmen that, that race, and a lot of these gentlemen fund the operations. They're allowed uh, electronic paddle shifts, huh. which is on the steering wheel, and, and you don't have to take your hand off to, to shift. Uh, you don't have to push in the clutch. It's all, it's not automatic, but what it does is when you activate that, it kind of stutters the engine, and then, you know, it, 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 a lever shifts the gear. And uh, the transmissions, you know, it's a dog ring style, not a synchronizer, so, you know, it just takes a, a momentary hesitation, and then, you know, it changes the speed of the, the input shaft and the, and, the, and the wheel speed, and, and those gears will just lock right in and, and shift. Same on the downshift. Fuel cells are 18 gallons. Uh, they can run you know, on a full fuel load a little over an hour. So, you know, in 24 hour race, you're going to see a lot of pit stops. Uh, minimum weight is 2375. Here at Daytona, we'll see top speeds on the front straightaway in the 195 range. Uh, as they come past the trial, we'll act work just before they break into turn one as the fastest, uh, fastest uh, section for these cars. Uh, they run on Continental tires. That's a spec tire that we, we run. Uh, some of the safety built into the car, inside the, the doors and, and components, there's a, there's a carbon fiber uh, crush panel. The front of the car has been designed with the radiator layout so that on an impact, that, that's a crushable structure. And on the rear, on the end of the gearbox, there's an attenuator that uh, is meant to absorb energy if the car were to back straight into the wall. It's not a lot, but it's a, it, you know, it does take some of that uh, you know, energy away. Cars all have onboard fire extinguishers. The engine compartment has an automatic uh, a thermal sensor that at specified temperature, it, it goes off and, and you know, puts the extinguishing in the engine compartment where the, where the fire is at that, at that temperature and will knock it down. Uh, the driver doesn't have to do anything. The removal system, basically that's a, a folded up plastic bag that's put in the top of the helmet and there's a tube over there and then with uh, compressed air either by a, a little inflator, a CO2 inflator or by a, a hand uh, squeeze ball like it would be on a blood pressure cuff. This bag expands and will gently bring the helmet off so that if, if you suspect a neck injury, you're not rustling with it over his ears and his mouth and his nose and if you've got earplugs and all that. This will gently pushes it off from the inside. Uh, talk about 2012, we did a little bit about the body work uh, and, and how that's uh, going to change. But again, like I said, there are new cars being built with that body work, but there are cars also being converted to, to the body work from, from existing chassis. Uh, I don't know, Chris, do you have any questions? Can we take some questions? Anyone? I, I'm, I'm always interested in cost. In, and that. in cost, and uh, I know you'll just be estimating, but yeah, I'll how be much do the cars cost new? You know, costs without an engine are you know, in the half a million dollar range. Right. Uh, engine yeah. programs, most of the manufacturers have a program where you, you don't really, you don't own the engine, it's a lease, lease rebuild uh, thing, and, and, you know, that, that ranges from, you know, 25 to 50, you know, an engine that you use. Um, so that's, 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 that's probably the biggest variables. Tires are close to $2,000 a set. Use, uh, they're limited for the 24 hour race. The limit per car is 30 sets for the entire weekend. So oh, hopefully you don't have to do that, but you know, that's, that's, a, that's a big bill. But that's from the first day of practice through qualifying and the race. And that's slick tires. It does not include rain tires. If we if had a lot of rain, obviously your slick tires are going to go down, but you know, hopefully it never did. We need 30 sets of rain tires. <laughs> it's going to be a miserable weekend. That, uh, that half million dollars is spread over, in many cases, many years. 
it would easily be five or six years of racing for a, for a chassis that you paid that money. Uh, easily, we've we've seen that, you yeah. know. But that's the that's the initial cost, you know. And your maintenance, you know, your maintenance is obviously going to you know drive that up. Yeah. But, you know, there are teams that that run a year on on, uh, you know, in the two million dollar range, but there are teams that spend probably five. Yeah. And, and a lot of that is, you know, personnel is, is a big expense. When you see teams that, that have contract people that they, they bring in for the races only or versus a, a team that might have 10 full-time employees or, or more. So How so many races in a, in a Grand Am It's going to be 13 next year, right? and, and that's up one. And next year you've got an uh, uh, a long distance yes. threesome, a, There's a, a triple uh, crown or something. Yeah, I, I don't think it's called the Triple Crown. <laughs> it's uh, Daytona 24 hour race, Rolex 24, the six hours at the Glen, and then uh, the Indianapolis race is going to be a three hour race, uh, and that's that's going to be the final race in that three that three race championship. Uh, it's, it's called the North American Endurance Championship. It caught me off. How many cars run in the 24 hours? That's another thing. We, you get uh, a lot on the track. We will expect. Uh, we could see at least. GT, which uh, I haven't talked about, GT, we're, we're blossoming in GT. You know, we're going to have 25 Porsches, probably maybe more, maybe 30. Uh, we expect three, maybe four of the Ferrari, F, uh, the new F458, I believe. And then uh, the Audi R8 is coming. We know APR is bringing at least one, uh, but we've heard there could be as many as three of the Audi R8, which is... Uh, it's not the R8 prototype of, of old. That's the, the street, the, the street uh, mid-engine production car that, that has raced in Europe for a number of years. With uh, I think they've had you know spec series and, and, and what have you. But they're coming over here, and, and, and they do have to con configure to some of the things that, that we that we require that aren't required in the rest of the world. Uh, and part of that is that same engine recipe formula applies to GT. And the numbers are a little bit lower, and, and and some of the cars coming actually have to run less horsepower than in uh, they, they come with from the manufacturer, the Dodge Viper being one. Which, uh, so how many do you think will be on the grid of uh, of GT then? I mean, it could be 35. Yeah. yeah. You know, GT's GT's going to be big. It's a big field. It, it 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 will be big, and the numbers are, you know, until until all is said and done, and you know the entry the entry. Mailer has gone out, and you know, to date, which is you know, we're over you know, a month and a half away or whatever. You know, we've only maybe got five to ten. How many can you race on the Daytona Speedway? I've never asked that question. What's oh, the max? Forty. Well, What's I don't the know if Grand Am. Forty-two for NASCAR. Well, in the because in that other race you run, we'll we'll call it call it the olden <laughs> days. <laughs> Back when. Uh, Good Tom. <laughs> you know, when Grand Am started in in 2000, I think we had 82 entries. <laughs> and that was, we were limited to start 80, and, and you know, due, due to attrition in practice, we did start 79 or 80. And for several years, we had 80, and then, and of course, uh, you know, the economy started going upside down, and, and we had some some years in the low 50s. And, and now, we'll, you know, we really don't like to see many more than 60. It's so, you know, in, in those days, we started out, I think we had five classes. There was a prototype. You know, one and two class. There were two GT classes, and then a catch-all uh, uh, American GT or you know something along those lines. And, you know, there were a lot of cars, a lot of classes, and uh, you know now that you know we, we made the focus when we went to to Daytona Prototypes in 2003 to get our class structure down to two classes to make it easier for people to identify with. You can look at a prototype and say, "There's a class, and everybody else is a GT car." You know, they look like a Porsche, they look like a BMW, they look like a Corvette, and, you know, and these, you know, look like, uh, you know, a prototype race car, so, so you can tell the difference. And, uh, Tom, I like to think that I was a part of that catalyst when I'd sit up in the suite going, uh, who's racing that? What's the difference between, this is just very confusing, well, it, and it really has made the racing so much more exciting. At least I like it. Well, we, you know, we, that's what we believe, and, and and then when you get to the end of the race, um, you don't have 15 winners. You have, you have two. You have two classes, you know, and they, they show first, second, and third, and, and, and 
those other the guys but, uh, or girls, women. But uh, when you had five classes, you went to you know three deep. You just had a lot of people up there, and by the time you got to the end, who cared? Yeah. I'm, I'm being honest with you. You know the uh, you know, people just. Uh, it was not interesting, and it was it was confusing for everybody. Yeah. Wasn't there a tremendous speed difference between the prototypes and the fifth class too? There, there was. Um, you know, now here we're at about ten seconds, maybe. Right. Uh, but the speed, overall speed differential, is not as as big. You know, the earlier prototypes had a lot more horsepower. They were a lot more aerodynamic and had had the more downforce, so they were a lot faster. And then when you got into the slower lower classes, you have a 50 mile an hour difference on, right. on the banking, and, and I think you're going to get a lap here in a little bit. When you get in the banking, in the, you know, in the ends of the bowl, see how far, try and see how far up the track you can see, because you're not going to see very far. I mean, you're not going to see a couple hundred yards in front of you because of the banking, because of the, the yeah. radius of the corner and the windshields and what have you, you can't see very far. So if you're coming up on somebody at 50 mile an hour and he's in the wrong place, you're going to have a tough time avoiding him. And you hit the brakes up there, you lock up, you're right in the wall. You just, you know, there's some triple force that's going to push you right up. And what speed do the sprint cars do around there? <laughs> they, they average a lap. I'll get to you in just a second. Sure. Let's see your handle. Um, you know, their average is, is just under 200. But, you know, when you do an average speed, you know, they're faster and, and, and you know, in certain sections, so. Stunning. Yes, sir, I'm sorry, you had your hand up. Ron Hagen, Track Lab Dino. Uh, I understand that um, uh, when tech seizes an engine for uh, inspection, and I understand it happens to about uh, each team three times a year, that it's about a $6,500 cost for rebuild. Um, is that is that true, uh, that you seize that many engines and you take a good engine out of a out of a team and then they have to run with what's left? Yes, sir. We take the engine to the dyno when we run it and then we take it apart. Uh, we want to make sure that, you know, if there's a valve di diameter specification or a camshaft or that it's not, you know, it's got a bigger bore or stroke or whatever, yes, we do take it apart. You uh, USAC uh, used to do that, and uh, they had us up as a mobile chassis dyno, and they are no longer seizing engines. Or we're just putting the whole vehicle on the on the dyno and finding out who's straight and who's not. We have at times used uh, the chassis dyno that NASCAR has has access to. Um, a lot of variables there. Yeah. Uh, so you know we want to know what the engine is as specified, and the teams the team cycle their engines out. So. You know there is a rebuild cost, but they are they are rebuilding those engines throughout the year anyway. And the other thing I was wondering about is, uh, have you started using uh, cryogenically treated uh, rotors to extend them drastically? Well, we as Grand Am don't we don't we don't ban it. We don't disallow it. There are teams that do do the uh, do that. Okay, thank you. We're going to take a group photo. Got us. I think so. You want to smiling or looking miserable? Oh no, you got to be smiling. Smile. Oh, Florida. Yeah. Florida. Florida. You can't be miserable. Come on. Okay, on. on three. One, two, three. One more time. One, two. That's in case you didn't smile good the first time. Three. All right. Thank you. Okay, now we're getting ready for our hot lap rides.